Good morning, everyone. Praise God. Granny here, y'all. Praise God. We one day closer to going home. One day closer, y'all. Praise God. I had a wonderful weekend. I'm going to tell you, there couldn't have been no finer gift on gift giving day than what I got. I spent more time with the kids than I did with the adults. I'm telling you. And it was amazing to hear those those precious, precious young ones talking about Jesus. I'm telling you, man, that little that little seed I planted in that little heart, my little granddaughter is is God's keeping it watered. I don't know. I ain't even questioning God how he's doing it, but he is keeping that he is keeping that little seed watered. Because she said I got her two books. One of them was she can read it daily and learn about God and and as every day read a page and learn about God and and the other one was about Jesus, and she 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 was reading it to me. It was so sweet because she was just talking about Jesus. And then her her uh, her cousin was was just right by our side, telling me because I got her a book, and I was afraid she wouldn't read it because uh, uh, her mother's not not really a believer or anything. But she did read it, and she was telling me about that book, and I was like, oh, I'm so you know that's the greatest gift y'all could have given me. For y'all to sit and talk about Jesus, I love it. So I got to buy two Bibles with their little names on it. They're due. They're ready for Bibles, y'all. They're ready for Bibles. I'm going to get them a Bible. I pray to God that we can make that happen and uh, see if I can't get a Bible sent to them. Praise God, y'all. That was just the greatest gift. That, that, that I, out of the whole freaking weekend, that was the best time I had right there. None of the grown-ups wanted to talk about Jesus, but those kids did. And that was just precious to me, y'all. That was precious. I enjoyed it. So I wanted to read y'all uh, Luke 21, y'all. Now I have to get my glasses on because I can't see. I have to have them to read. And, you know, in Luke 21, he talks about the same thing Matthew 24 um, talks about, where he was saying, Woe to them that are with child in those days, and, and give suck in those days, for there shall be great distress in the land. And wrath upon his, this people, and they shall fall away the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive unto, unto, into all nations in Jerusalem, and be throttled down by the Gentiles, throttled down of the Gentiles, until the times of the Gentile be fulfilled. Um, and it goes on and on, you know, and men's hearts failing them for fear, and for looking after these things which are coming upon the earth, for the powers of heaven will be shaken. You know, and uh, so it, it's talking about these things. And, uh, you know, and then Jesus spoke into, and this is in Luke 21, y'all. Uh, and then Jesus spoke to them in parables. So in Luke, it went a little bit further. Uh, Behold the fig tree and then all the trees. And when thou now sit, shoot forth and ye see and ye know and know that your own selves this summer is nigh is now is now nigh at hand so likewise ye when ye see these things come to pass know that the kingdom of god is nigh at hand verily i say unto you this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled heaven and earth shall pass away but my words shall not pass away now, this is the important part that I wanted to read. This is proof that the uh, that the uh, rapture is going to happen. There is going to be a departure for uh, the Lord's people. This is proof right here. But it also says not all Christians will go. Not all Christians will go. Lukewarm Christians will not go. So just listen carefully to this part. And this is in Luke 21, verse 34 uh, and 35. So listen carefully. And take heed to yourselves, lest any time your hearts be overcharged and surfeiting, which means surfeiting. Oh, let me do that again. Uh, surfeiting means to feel something to excess. To overindul an overindulgence in food and drink. So surfeiting, least any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkardness, 
and cares of this life and cares of this life. And so that day come up on you unaware. Okay, this is from the Lord Jesus Christ's mouth. So if y'all want to argue about it, then you argue with Jesus Christ because he's the one that said it. And take heed to yourself, least at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeit, surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life. And so that day come upon you unaware. In other words, you miss it. Cares upon this life. That means all you who are who are dwelling on things of this uh, on the cares of this life, you stop it. Jesus wants you a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And then he goes on to say, "For as a snare shall it come upon all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth." So watch ye therefore, now listen carefully, watch ye therefore, and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape, escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Jesus said that with his own mouth. Pray and watch and, and, and pray. He says, pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things. Jesus said that himself, so if you got to argue with anybody, argue with Jesus, because he's the one that said that. Pray that you escape all these things. Pray. So once again, don't don't be a drunkenness. Don't be surfeiting surf, uh, in, in, in anything. And, and don't be, don't be, uh, cast all your cares into this life. Jesus is asking for you 100%. Watch and pray. Always. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. Always. That ye may be accounted worthy. Praise God, y'all. That's I, I, I had to read this because, you know, not all Christians, lukewarm Christians, if you're caught up and so wrapped up in things of this world, you know, you're going to miss it. You're going to miss it. You know, seven years ago, my father in heaven told me I had nothing to worry about. So I quit worrying seven years ago about anything on this world. And and it, it's been gradually from that day forth, gradually, slowly, every year, it just seems like I am more and more and more disconnected from things of this world. And I'm telling you, I am more disconnected this year than I have ever been in my entire life. And probably next year, even more. And I don't know, I feel even more disconnected just in this last month. You know, in this last month, in these last few days alone, I feel like I'm walking around and everything's a dream. Now, I don't know about the rest of you, but I do feel that way. But I am not casting all my cares into this world. Yes, I still got to pay bills. Yes, I still got to get through my day. I got to... Uh, think about what to cook for supper for my husband. I got to clean up the house and I have things to do and I go ahead and do them because you have to do the things you got to do every day. Yes, I go and, and, and went down to see the kids over the weekend and, and I was really entertained with those children talking about Jesus. Yes. And it was the most fun I had the whole time I was down there was talking to them children about Jesus. That was the most fun I had because I love those kids and I know the Lord Jesus Christ loves those kids and I pray for them all the time and don't think God won't water those seeds because God did water those seeds. I was really amazed and really happy about it. But I didn't cast every care. I didn't I didn't sit and worry, oh my Lord, did I do good on Christmas? Did I give all these presents? Did they like them? Oh, did, because you know, I wasn't worried about it. They didn't like them and they know what to do with them, you know, take them back and get something else with it. I, I ain't worried about it. I did the best I could. I did the best I could with what we had. And, and it, you know, I already know what Christmas is. I already know where it come, come from. I don't want to get into the whole thing because I don't want to create no controversy, but I already know where Christmas come from. And I don't normally celebrate it. You won't find a tree in this house or any decorations. We don't do it. And ever since I read Jeremiah 10, I just don't believe in doing it. And I won't do it. 
But we still bought gifts and took them down to the other kids because they still celebrate it. You know, you can't tell them, you can't tell others because they don't want to hear it. You know, all you could do is just throw it out there. You know, you know, Jeremiah 10 speaks against that. And that's about all you can do. You can't force somebody to believe what you believe. And you can't force somebody to do what you do. But you can pray for them. They can't stop you from praying for them. So I do. I pray for them. And I would, I've been praying over my little grandbabies, y'all. And somehow or another, God's keeping the, that little seed water. Praise God, y'all. And that's the way God works. Praise God, y'all. But I'm just saying that not everybody will go, you know. I, and and uh, Luke 21, I just read it to you. If you are lukewarm, you will not go. Don't, don't worry about it. You do what you can do here. But you pray always, pray always, never cease. Just keep, continue prayer, praying and watching. And that's why I always say, and shame on all you that were saying that the rapture is supposed to happen this Christmas Eve and this Christmas. Uh, you were wrong again. People need to quit setting dates. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, setting dates is wrong. I had someone on here. That said, oh, it'll be this Christmas Eve, between Christmas Eve and the 26th, and, and maybe even today, I'm not sure. Uh, but shame on you. I keep telling you, don't set dates. Now, I always said, I always said, the only thing I'm concerned about is how much we're going to have to see before it comes. I've always said that, and I'll continue saying it. If you come on my channel setting dates, the only thing I'm going to tell you is I hope you're right. I hope you're right. <laughs> That's all I can say. I know it's coming, but I couldn't tell you when. But I can tell you that it ain't it ain't long from now, and I, we will probably see it in our time. We will probably see that day come in our time. Uh, that's because that's it's it's in our hearts. It's in our hearts that it's coming. But uh, I can't say no dates because I don't know when. And I'm telling you, Jesus himself said he didn't know when. Only the Father in heaven knows. And you, you're you not better than Jesus. So quit setting dates. You've already been proven wrong through uh, October and September and November and December. You've already been proved. So quit setting dates. That, that means you're a false prophet if you set dates. And then that day comes and it doesn't happen. And how many people have you led astray because you set dates? Stop it. Stop it. You don't have any proof that it's that it's going to happen when you say it's going to happen. And how do we know the Lord ain't saying, well, you know, I'm not going to let it happen then because they keep saying, they keep trying to set dates. And he has said not to set dates. The Lord told me seven years ago because, I mean, I've, I've done it. I was like, oh, I hope it happens that Christmas. I'll never forget seven years ago. Christmas seven years ago, I expected it to happen. And when it didn't happen, I was so disappointed. And I went out talking to the Lord. I could have swore it was going to happen, God. I could have swore. And he told me, stop setting dates. For on that day, I have a special day and a special time and a special hour appointed for that time, for that event. And on that day and on that hour, you'll all be saying it couldn't happen at a better time. Now. We might be saying that now, but there must be something pretty uh, crazy going on during the time if we would be saying that when it happens. So the only thing I'm concerned about is how much we're going to have to see before it comes. And we're very close to saying, uh, couldn't have happened at a better time. If it happened right now, we'd probably say that. But obviously... It's not time. So just let the Lord, just let the Lord do what the Lord's got to do and trust him. Hang in there and trust him. Like I always say, be ready for anything, be ready for everything. Keep the whole armor of God on and keep your wedding clothes on too, because you never know. Be ready for anything, be ready for everything. And I say it on this channel all the time, all the time. I never set dates. I, I I can't do that. I just can't do that. I would love to get everybody excited and say, oh, you know, i got a feeling it's going to happen this week. You know, I'd love to be able to do that. 
it would it would certainly get me a lot more uh subscribers for sure but i can't do that i can't do that i i mean i just cannot set dates and i won't but i can't tell you i expect it to i expect it i suspect it's gonna be very soon very soon it will be in our lifetime. I believe it will. I believe this is the generation to see it because look how much this generation, look how many prophecies has already been fulfilled for this generation. Wonderful times we're living in. Wonderful times. Wonderful times. And we are seeing prophecies being fulfilled as we speak. These are the times. We are seeing lawlessness coming into effect. Just wait till, oh, just wait till next year, y'all. Just wait. I pray we don't have to see too much of next year if we got to see any. I really do. Because it's, it's going to be crazy. It is going to be crazy. Uh, anyway, y'all. So I just wanted to put that out there, y'all. I just, uh, read Luke 21. Read it. It's very important. Like I said, <clears throat> Like I said, um, like I, y'all, I read it. These are Jesus's words. Jesus's words. Uh, 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 t and take heed yourself. That's in, in, in Luke 21, 34. Take heed to yourself, least at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkardness. And cares of this life. So that that day come upon you unaware. And he's talking about that uh, thief in the night appearing of the Lord. When he talks about that day come upon you unaware. He's talking about that day that thief in the night appearing of the Lord. For as a snare it shall come upon all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore. And pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass. He wouldn't say escape if there wasn't going to be a, a, a way to escape it. But Jesus Christ said that out of his own mouth. So argue with him because he said it. That you escape, that you shall, uh, you may be accounted worthy. To escape all these things that shall come to pass. And to stand before the Son of Man in the air. Y'all, that's what he's talking about. It's right here. Read it in, in, in Luke 21. That's 34, 35, and 36. Read it. It's the Word of God. It's facts. I can add that to the uh, Jesus Christ is Lord 316. I can add that to his things that he said. There it is. Luke 21, 34, 35, 36. Watch ye thee for, therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. And he's talking about in the air. So y'all... You got to get, he's not asking for 50% of you. He's not asking for 75% of you. He's not asking for 10% of you. He's asking for 100% of you. Give him 100% of you. Yeah, these things, yeah, we got these things. You got a bill due next week. Yeah, you got, you got children to take care of. Got to put clothes on the back. But do you not think the Lord, he provided, he, he provided for the birds of the air. He provides for them every day and shelter too. Will he not do the same for you? Aren't you counted more worthy than them birds? Come on now. He loved you more. He's going to see to it that you got everything that you need. He has me every time. Every time. Every month we get through. And we're like, well, you know, I ain't going to question Lord how he got us through it. Because I just praise his name and I thank him. He got us through it. No, I don't have the best of everything. I don't have a mansion. I, I have a, a, a stick-built house that my husband built himself. And the Lord provided, you know, the Lord made it happen. But it's, it's, it's a house. It's a home. 
and it's warm right now. We got a fire going. It's nice and warm. So it's a cozy little home in the winter time. And we figure how to keep it cool in the summer. So praise God. It's a home. I got a roof over my head and I I don't never go hungry. So praise God for that. Well, you can tell by looking at my belly there. I don't never go hungry. So God provides. He provides. He told me seven years ago, you have nothing to worry about. The only people that need to worry are the people that's worried. And I have not worried since. And I'm not going to start now. <laughs> I give the Lord 100% of me now. And I didn't realize how, how much I was lacking that until I quit smoking. You know? Still, y'all, I'm over four weeks now, four weeks in a few days, no smoking. I've, I've quit cold turkey, no smoking. And and I didn't realize how much of that that I had to, uh, I still lacked, you know. But it was that day that I said, you know, I had to deny myself daily and take up my cross and follow Jesus. I had to deny myself. And that's when I started bid. I don't know that I'm not completely denying myself. And I was and I kept getting confronted with this smoking. You you smoke, you can't say that you're denying yourself. You can't say that. So I was like, wow. So yeah, I had to I had to quit smoking. Well, that was the last thing I had to quit. I have no more habits now. Praise God. Now I'm ready to follow Jesus. I'm ready to give him everything. I'm ready to give Jesus everything. So I got to do that, and I got to keep watching and praying that he's coming. He's coming soon, y'all. He's coming soon. Praise God, y'all. Keep watching and praying and keep keep your eyes peeled and, and keep looking and, and praying that you are you will be held accountable. You'll be accounted. You'll be counted worthy. So you can escape all the things that's coming upon this earth. It's going to be bad, y'all. It's going to be bad. It is going to be bad. I don't want to be here. I'm praying that I am accounted worthy. I'm praying that I am accounted worthy. And I pray every day. I don't want to be here when that time, when when that all the, the wrath of God comes upon this, on the whole world. And everyone in it, everyone that dwells in it will, will suffer. I don't want to be here, y'all. Anyway, we'll go over the prayer list, y'all. I got... I got a few uh, names on it uh, this week, and uh, sorry, I haven't done a video in a while. I, I miss everybody. I miss doing my videos, but uh, we was getting the holidays had a lot to do before we got there, and, and now I'm back, so here we are. Praise God. Glad to be back, and uh, I'm going to pray for these folks. Uh, Lady Jess wants to pray for her kids' salvation. And she's having uh, breast pain for, uh, and we need to pray for her uh, mammogram results. So we're praying for good results there. And uh, Miss Nelson is praying for her 29-year-old daughter living a bisexual life. Uh, that's that's urgent prayers. You know, I've got a uh, I've got a, a, a niece also. Uh, I'd like to add her to the prayers prayer list and god knows who she are, she is uh joanne uh, mankuski i believe that's the name is uh needs prayer for unexpected surgery uh prayer for a speedy recovery and greg thompson is praying for uh niece's salvation and kimberlyn is praying for division in the church you know we you know we got to pray for these churches uh most of them are already divided most of them are already already falling into the the way falling away so we need definitely need to pray for you know churches so let's pray for these folks and let's give it to god we want to give it all to god and let god handle it and just trust the lord for it and cast no more cares in this world just give it to god and go to sleep like my little picture says. Give it to God and go to sleep. Y'all don't give it to God. And then cast no more care into it. Let God handle it. God can handle things. I'm amazed how he planted. I planted that seed in that little girl's heart. And God has kept it watered. 
God has. Praise God, y'all. They were talking to me about Jesus. Telling me about Jesus. Praise God, y'all. And their families don't talk about Jesus. So God's kept that water. So let's pray for these folks and, and give it to give it to God. Uh, dear Lord, we, we pray over this list from the beginning to the end, Lord. We pray for all the names on this list, each and every one of them, Lord. We pray that your will be done in their lives, Lord. Comfort for the ones that need comforting. Healing for the ones that need healing, Lord. And, and victory for the ones that need to receive victory over their circumstances, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that you take care of each and every one of us, Lord, and have, have provided for our needs and and uh, has never let us down, Lord. We thank you for, for giving your life for our sins, Lord, and saving us from ourselves. And we look forward, Lord, to spending our eternity with you in your kingdom. And we pray, Lord, we pray that day comes soon. And we thank you, Lord, for giving us that hope. And we, and, and we keep watching and praying, Lord, and we pray that you we are accounted worthy lord when that day comes lord we pray that we are accounted worthy in the name of our lord jesus christ i pray amen and i want to thank y'all for your prayers thank y'all for all that you do i love you but god loved you first and thank y'all for watching